Um, the first thing that we're looking at is at work here. Um, so this lives on Zoll Online. Um, so they just go to any web browser um, and they can pull up at work. Uh, they're seeing their vehicles on a map and we overlay that on Google Maps. And they can click on the vehicle. They can see the status of the vehicle. Um, so this vehicle is actually en route. They can switch to a street view and see exactly where this truck is located if they want. Um, all right. So one of the other nice features of that work is the ability to go back and play back and see where that vehicle went and how they got there. Um, and so what you're seeing here on the right side of the map in at work is is actually um, the pickup and the drop off here. So the pickup is A, B being the drop off, and where that truck was when we dispatched them. So they actually were right here on on 480. They drove across, got off the exit, um, and then looped back around and got on 10. And then once they uh, pick up the patient, it actually turns to green bubbles. You can highlight over these at any given point, see their speed, their heading, um, see how fast they're going, uh, the direction they're going. Um, but you can see um, the full picture of, of how that uh, patient was transported from A to B on a Google map. You can also at any given point uh, come over here and view GPS locations for this call. So if there's ever a question of why they went or the, the speeds they were going, um, you can obviously you can pull that information up as well. And so you can see here um, at that given point they were driving 68 miles per hour. And, and I can go ahead and move my cursor down and see that vehicle actually move on the map. So, so the next item on the list is to show how in CAD the system kind of ranks what vehicle to send based on uh, call type. Um, and so what happens is, is when you throw in an emergency here, so we'll say the emergency is 911, Jim is my caller, we're going to go to 1234 Main Street, and it's for a 64-year-old male who's conscious and alert, and he's having chest pain. And now once I save this, I can select on that call in my open work, and it's going to rank my candidates. And it's only going to show me the appropriate units for this type of call. And so for an ALS call type, it is showing me um, AS, ALS1 is the fastest truck here at 13.8 miles away. But it's showing me that BLS1 and my helicopter and wheelchair van can't handle those types of calls. So in my rankings, it only shows me the list of vehicles that are appropriate for that call type. All right, so next I'm going to walk you through how to put a call through Mobile Care Connect. Uh, real quick and easy, uh, you come up here to Schedule Transport. And this is where you're just going to fill in all the information. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this information in. So we'll say that the call is for today at 3 o'clock. And it's going to be for a non-emergency ALS transfer. And we're coming out of Boulder Community. So patient has uh, oxygen and is on 2 liters per minute. Um, also has MRSA, so we're going to throw that in there. So that's kind of screen one. The next screen is actually going to search for a patient. So I can type in first name, last name date of birth and or social you must match on three of four criteria to search your database and so we're going to go ahead and search for that customer it's going to automatically populate that information for me if it finds a customer you can see that it's populated my address of information in there and we're going to go ahead and go to the next page the next page is insurance information you can see at the top here it already has all my payers in the database that we've pulled um, if I want to add any additional insurance information I can add that down here at the bottom the next one is where you're going to pick the patient up from. So today we're going to pick up from the ordering facility in the emergency room. We're going to take him to his residence at 10242 Richfield Street in Commerce City. And the last page is just a real quick summary showing me all the information. At that point, if I want to attach a file, I can go ahead and attach um, you know, a file and uh, 
attach any sort of file that I want. So kind of a neat little feature there. And now that's all I need to do and I'll finish it and uh, it's going to take me to the calendar. I'll stop at this calendar here so you can kind of see and uh, maybe get a better idea of what that looks like. But basically it's going to show you all of your calls in this calendar view and I'll go back to December here with a little bit more call um, criteria here. So you can see all the calls here um, from de December um, in a calendar view and this is from that facility so that facility can log in and see all the calls that are scheduled to and from. Alright so I'm going to walk you through Navigator now um, and so the first thing that you can see is I'm back in Rescue and Dispatch and I'm going to go ahead and assign uh, our call to ALS5. Now we know ALS5 is logged into Navigator because of the green so if you want to point that out you can but again we're going to dra drag and drop here and we're going to assign it. This, the first thing that they're going to see on Navigator when that happens is our big red screen right and so our big red screen is showing um, that we need to respond it's going to count up it's showing us where the incident is uh, 4568 baseline road it's a priority 3 non emergency transfer um, and so they can select anywhere on the screen it's a big red button that they can click and go responding so we're going to go ahead and click on that and go responding and now in their map, it's going to actually give them turn-by-turn -turn directions. And so I'm going to go ahead and start my simulator here. See here, let me move my cursor out of the way so you can get clear shots if you need to. But you can see that it's going to give me turn-by-turn -turn directions. It's also going to talk to me. So it's going to give me turn-by-turn -turn directions visually at the very top there where it says in 0.3 miles, turn left um, on Phil Hills Parkway. I'm going the wrong way. So it's actually going to reroute me and give me new directions here in a minute there we go and so now one miles I'm going to turn right onto Colorado 93 or Broadway Street um, just to give you some other uh, information here why that's driving I'm getting my turn by turn directions um, at the bottom down here you can see my customer notes I want to see some more notes I can pull this out and I can see notes and alerts if I want to see um, some incident details I can select the incident details I can show traffic which currently we don't have any you can see everything is green when I'm showing traffic you can see the green is good if there was traffic it would route around that so using the the Bing option of our online maps it's going to route the user around um, the traffic so this is really navigator um, you can see a bunch of other details in here um, I can see the work that I've done so far today I can go back and I can see the response information. Um, let's go ahead and go I'll go into uh, this one here. So here's where we're transporting the patient. So there's my transfer screen. There's also my notes and alerts screen again. You can see your patient details come across. I can see general information, doctors and priors. So there's my doctors and priors screen. I can see employer address, payer information. Open this up and see my payer information. All of my times. I'm going to go back to my response screen because one of the cool things that you're going to see here in a minute is uh, when this truck actually gets close. And this is one of the nice features about navigators that you can actually geofence this. And so what I mean by geofencing is, is once this truck gets close to that address within a certain 
mile radius, whether it's a tenth of a mile or 500 feet or whatever, it can actually timestamp this truck at scene, at destination, at post, uh, all by itself. And so um, you're going to see here we're going, uh, when it gets close to this address, it's automatically going to bring up my odometer readings uh, that I need to plug in. So that way I can uh, just punch in my, my odometer reading. So uh, I'm not going to push at, push at scene, but you can see in the very top right-hand corner, if I wanted to push at scene at any given point, I could push at scene, but I'm going to let the system automate that for me. And once again, once it breaks that barrier, whether it's 1,000 feet, 500 feet, you know, quarter of a mile, tenth of a mile, whatever you want, it's going to um, automatically timestamp that for me. So in about a second here, two seconds. Now we're coming up on our hospital. There's our hospital that we're going to. And it broke the barrier. So now it automatically asked me for my odometer. And so now I'm close enough. Um, you're going to see the truck is still going to continue to move for a little bit. It is at location now. So it's currently at the current status of that scene. But it's pulling into the actual driveway for that hospital. So the crew didn't have to hit themselves at scene. The system can automate that for them. This now. So lastly, the thing I'm going to cover is our Insight Analytics dashboards for dispatch um, and in general. So Insight uh, lives in the Zoll Online platform again. So we're back in our ZoolOnline.com. Um, look, look at my EMS and fire company here. Select an Insight, and we'll just bring up a couple of these dashboards so that way you can get a good snapshot of what you want for your demo, for your video. Let's talk about uh, this heat one here. So we'll do dispatch overview. So what you're going to see here is an overview of your dispatch operations. So in the very top left-hand corner, you can see your response times. Blue is the response time to scene 90th percentile. Um, your average um, or your goal is uh, eight minutes there. So you can see what our goal is, um, is eight minutes, and that's what that red line is. Your your um, average uh, time to scene is is the orange, right? So you have your response time is 90th percentile, 14.9 minutes, but your running average um, is about five minutes um, for that type of call. Uh, in the middle there, you can see some demand analysis reports um, as far as by hour, by day. Um, and again, all these are designed to be quickly used. So if I select on chair car and I want to keep only chair cars, you're going to see now my graph is only uh, chair cars. Um, I can change things on the right-hand side to only look at current calls. So if I only want to look at hot responses. And so now I'm just looking at hot responses in my heat map. If I hover over those, I can see the call type, um, the location of those types of calls. I'm going to go back. We'll look at a different dashboard here. Um, all right, so here's uh, on-time performance for scheduled calls. Um, you can see we do it by day of week, so January 5th through the 9th. Um, at the very top, you can see pre-scheduled late. We're looking at the last five days, and again, there's a filter here, so you can look at you know however many days you want. So if you want to look at the last seven days, 15 days, whatever. We're on time is purple, blue is 15 minutes late or less, 15 to 30 minutes is orange, and greater than 30 minutes is green. Um, and so you can simply see uh, by looking at this information where you line up, right? So January 5th, we're 50% on time. Um, down below here is going to show you the call volume. Uh, by time of day. So if you need to get an idea of where you're lagging at, um, it's going to show you by time of day where those pickup times are at. Um, down below there, you're going to see some late count by facility. So maybe you got to do a little PR uh, before you know you get the call saying they're going to drop you. You can do a little bit of PR to see where you're at. On the right-hand side, late count by unit. Um, so you can see uh, how many trucks, uh, if there's a kind of a trend going with a certain truck. A certain crew um, and then the details down below. 